This piece of um, ancient computing technology is an old Latitude D610 Adele, and uh, this hails from 2005, which makes it 13 years old, and it has finally given up the ghost. I have repaired it before more times than I care to remember. However, this time uh, a power surge um, yeah, around here, we get very many power cuts and fluctuations and it has finally killed it stone dead. Uh, no booting, no nothing. So it's uh, time to move on. The guy that uses this obviously only needs it for very light things like surfing the internet, uh, YouTube, listening to music and those kinds of things. So he, he doesn't need a high power machine, which is fortunate because I don't have one to give him. However, what I do have is another Dell. Now, this one is very slightly more modern. This is an Inspire, Inspiron 1300, and it even says Windows Vista capable. Yowzy has a Celeron M processor. Now, this boots up fine, but uh, the keyboard is a, is a mess, uh, Ill illegible. Uh, it looks like the keyboard and that one is the same shape, so we might get lucky there and swap that out. I've managed to find some extra memory for it. Um, this used the old um, DDR2 uh, PC24200 uh, memory, but I have found some PC25300, a couple of one gig sticks, and uh, they were they will work in the same uh, slots on, on this machine. Clearly the next issue is that we don't want to be putting XP back on it and it's not really capable of doing much more in the, in the Windows uh, environment. I think this will be an ideal candidate to try one of the lighter weight Linux distros on and I've downloaded one so let's see if we can shoehorn it onto here and see where we go. The operating system I've decided to install will be this Linux Mint 19 Tara and uh, this is generally regarded as being a, a good alternative uh, for somebody that's familiar with uh, XP uh, type of interface. So we'll see how this looks. I have already downloaded the ISO and I like to use this Rufus program and as always links in the description. So let's select our file, here it is, and it's already selected our device, so let's just go. Clearly that process took a few minutes, but now that it's done we can move on to the next challenge and uh, try and get the old laptop to boot from it. Now with the USB drive installed and the machine set to boot from USB, let's see we're going to be lucky. That looks very promising. Clearly this is going to take some time and it probably won't be very exciting. So we have uh, the option here obviously to install and we're going to need to install this in Spanish. And continue. And we'll install the optional software as well while we're at it. So what it's asking us here is do we want to wipe the disk and install Linux Mint, which we do. And the, uh, the time zone So again, clearly this is going to take some time, so we'll, we'll come back when it's done its magic. With Mint installed, let's boot it up for the first time and see how it looks. Nice and tidy as we would expect, and with the, the welcome to uh, Linux Mint and the, the guide there. I can see there is an issue though. When I look down, you cannot see it, but I will get the screen recorder installed now. and. The issue I can see is that there's no Wi-Fi connection um, down in the taskbar 
all I can see is the Ethernet, which uh, is not connected. Uh, I need to find a cable for that, and then we'll move forward. With the screen recorder now running, I can show you what the, the issue is. Although we have uh, an Ethernet connection here, uh, we do not have any Wi-Fi. Now there is a Wi-Fi card installed in this guy, so we have to discover why it hasn't, uh, hasn't found it. So as usual, the internet is our friend. This appears to be a similar issue. Let's try the command that's been suggested here. Pasting that into our terminal window. And we can see there the uh, Ethernet interface first, followed by the Broadcom wireless adapter. Kernel driver news B43 PCI bridge. So that part of it appears to be working. And this guy was getting a similar output and the recommended fix here is to get the, uh, the firmware installer so let's see how that works okay so it's done a bunch of stuff and now uh, the information here is to to reboot so let me just favorite this or bookmark it so that's bookmarked now and we'll go and uh, reboot it. In summary then uh, I think it's going to be very happy with this. Um, the interface is not that dissimilar to, to Windows so clearly you have all the, all the programs that you need to get started there and the majority of the time it'll only be using the, the internet anyway. So with Firefox installed there and I've changed the home page now to uh, Google España and a new lease of life for an old machine.